first thing we noticed, probably when you hit play, this ball, there's not really any bounce to it. And that's, we really need it to bounce. So what we're going to do is apply a physics material to it. Every object in the simulation kind of has a default physical material to it, but it's not particularly exciting. Well, if I go back to the physics project setting, it's actually the default material is none, um, which means it, they don't really do anything special. And this will control things like bounce. So we're going to go and create a new physics material. And this is going to be our uh, I guess I'll call it fizz ball. Our ball is physical material. And it sets some reasonable defaults in here. Has it changed anything at all? Nope. So this presumably are the defaults if you don't apply physical material to anything. I just realized there's no, there also is no change because I haven't actually applied it to the ball. It's just part of the project. We actually have to drag it over either to the ball this way or with the ball selected, we can drag it over to the inspector. There we go. Now it's got a physics material right over here. We can also select it by clicking this little target, which brings up this pop-up, which lets you choose from any physics material in your entire project. You can also search by typing in, which is very handy for large projects. And now it's got the material. If we run it, still nothing. All right. So that represents, that is the sort of default behavior, which is not terribly exciting. We want our ball to be very bouncy. Ah, that's the problem. It's got a bounciness of zero right now. Bounciness ranges from zero to one. And you can put in fractions if you'd like. But we want perfect bounciness. We don't want it to lose any energy whatsoever on a bounce. So we're going to put that in. And we also, the bounce combined, the bounce takes into account the material of the ball, but also the material of the thing that it bounces against. Um, so, you know, if bricks aren't bouncing, they have a bounciness of zero, we don't want really the average here. We want to make sure this ball is 100% bounciness all the time. So we're just going to tell it to always use the maximum bounciness. That'll ensure that it always has a one. So now if we hit play, it should go down and bounce and pretty much just bounce forever going straight up and down because it should have perfect bounce here. Now, there's one more thing we're going to do at this point, just to make sure. Sometimes when I was doing this in a test, the ball, because I don't know, there's a little bit of randomness, a little bit of rounding errors. Sometimes the ball wouldn't bounce straight up and down. It might drift slightly, ever so slightly left and right, especially if it's actually potentially rubbing up against the back plane, uh, which is a definite possibility here. Now there's, you know, little things we could shrink the ball just a little so it doesn't hit the, the back plane, but you know, there maybe there's still going to be a little back and forth randomness. The best way to do it, because we don't want this ball to shoot off towards the front of the simulation and fall out the game map, we are going to add a constraint on its motion and we are going to freeze its position in the Z axis. So now if I hit play, everything should still work exactly the same as it did before, but it's now impossible for it to move um, left and right this way, right? Or from this point of view, it's impossible for it to move forward towards the camera or back away from the camera, which is exactly what we want for this simulation. Now, we have basic physics, but we still don't have a game. Uh, we do need to put our walls in, so we're going to go ahead and do that first before we do anything else. So that is just going to be another cube. So zero, 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 we're going to call this wall top. And I am going to scale it in the x direction uh, 10. Nope, I guess it's going to be 20. I guess I knew that. And the walls definitely need a color, we're going to create a new material. So I've got the material folder selected and then I click new material so it automatically put it in there, not that it's particularly hard. So this is going to be the wall material. We're going to give it, it's going to be a dark sort of steely gray, I think. And I'm going to drag that onto the wall. There we go, much easier to see. And we may as well create a material for our background. And we'll drag that right onto the background plane. There it is. And what color do we want to set that to? It's currently gray, like a pretty plain white gray, which I guess is going to be fine for now. We'll probably want to add a lot more interesting color at some point. So we've got our wall piece. We've got to move it up to the top of the map, which is going to be at 10. Now, one thing to note, if we rotate around here, you've got to remember that this is aligned. Oh, it's not really going to be very easily visible. Um, if I switch to wireframe view, which I can do with this pull down here, you might be able to see, especially if I were to do that, you might be able to see that the wall comes up halfway up. Remember that the center of this cube is where the 
this sort of coordinate is. So at the 10 mark of the of the wall top, the y equals 10. So it's overlapping a little. But that's not that's that's fine. That's going to work perfectly fine for our simulation. We don't really we're not really bothered by that. Um, so that's one wall, which is good. We're going to duplicate this twice. So this is going to be our wall left. We're going to set it back to zero. We're going to set it to negative 10. And we're going to rotate it around the x-axis, 90 degrees. We have a wall. And yet the, the corners line up kind of silly, which we could easily fix. But I don't think we're going to have to. I'm going to take another this way. wall right. We're going to move this to positive 10, 0. And again, we're going to rotate it around the y, or sorry, the z-axis, and have it there. And now if I bring back my game view, there you go. That looks, that looks right. We've got walls. It doesn't change our simulation, but it gives us something to make sure that we're always going to stay within the boundaries of the game, again, except at the bottom, which we'll have to get to very soon. So our ball seems to be working okay. Let's make our changes. Let's turn off gravity on the ball. 